Welcome back to Unit 2 of Module 3, Water Accounting using VAP. In this video, we will discuss about the data needs of Water Accounting Plus. After watching this video, you will be able to describe data needs for Water Accounting Plus, identify some of the remote sensing data sources used for water accounting, and describe other global data sets used in Water Accounting Plus. Water Accounting Plus is based on mainly open access remotely sensed data. We can classify this data broadly as remotely sensed spatial data and time series data of in situ measurements. The remotely sensed spatial data include catchment boundary and data on land use, precipitation, evapotranspiration and change in storage data, and data on protected areas and lakes and reservoirs. Time series data such as precipitation, evapotranspiration and runoff, if they are available, can be used to validate the results of the water accounting study. Basin and subbasin boundaries and river networks can be obtained from HydroShed. It is a mapping product that provides georeferenced data sets, including river networks, watershed boundaries, drainage directions, and flow accumulations, derived using high resolution elevation data obtained from shuttle radar topographic machine. Basin boundaries and river networks can also be obtained from local authorities. If these are not available, they can be delimited from digital elevation models using GIS. Raw satellite data can be classified into land use and land cover categories. Land use and land cover categories provides a method for determining the extent of various land uses and cover types such as urban, forest, shrubland, agriculture, etc. Land use land category data products are mostly released years after the satellite images were taken and could be out of date to a certain extent when they are released. In Water Accounting Plus, the land use map forms the basis for dividing the basin landscape into four main categories. These categories are protected land use, utilized land use, modified land use, and managed water use. Protected land use include areas that have a special nature status and are protected by national governments or international NGOs. Protected land use relates to the environmentally sensitive land use and natural ecosystems that are set aside for environmental protection. National parks, Ramsar sites, drinking water and coastal protection zones are typical examples of protected land use. Utilized land use include areas that have a light utilization with a minimum anthropogenic influence. The water flow is essentially natural. This class represents a low to moderate resource utilization of the original vegetation where the human influence is minimal, such as savannas, woodlands, natural pastures, wetlands, mountainous shrubs, riparian corridors, etc. Modified land uses refer to land that is significantly modified by human activity for the sake of production. Water diversions and withdrawals do not take place in the modified land use group. But by modifying vegetation density, hydrological processes such as evapotranspiration, drainage, percolation, and recharge are affected. Changes in evapotranspiration in the modified land use class can have significant impact on groundwater levels. Stream flows, 
and downstream water availability. Rainfed cropping systems, deforestation, plantation forests, typically for in the modified land use classes. Managed water use represents the land use class in which the natural water cycle is manipulated by physical infrastructure. Water is intentionally retained, withdrawn, pumped or diverted and used for certain objectives. Examples are drinking water supply schemes, irrigation systems, storage for hydropower, maintaining water levels for navigation, flood storage in wetlands, etc. Managed water use includes domestic water use in urban areas and villages and irrigated agriculture. There are several satellite products where we can access special, special data on evapotranspiration and precipitation. Some of the satellite products for evapotranspiration, precipitation, and the change storage are shown in this table. Some of the evapotranspiration data are not anymore available, and the data for change of storage have gaps from mid-2016 to the beginning of 2018. When it comes to selection of satellite products, some products perform better than others at different locations. Therefore, we have to check and compare products with locally available data such as in situ measurements before selecting a particular product to use. In some of the bases, we may not have information on protected areas. In such cases, the world database on protected areas can be consulted. In Water Accounting Plus, areas designated by International Union for Conserv Conservation of Nature, IUCN, as categories 1 and 2 are classified as protected land uses. When there is no information on lakes and reserves in a basin, global reservoir and dam database can be consulted. However, the data could be outdated or not recently updated. And we need to check with local information and update accordingly. This was all about the data needs for Water Accounting Plus. In the next video, we will discuss water balance of a river basin. Hope to see you there. Bye.